You have sunk my battleship. Excellent! Yeah! You must play me again. What? Possess my dad. Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey was released in the summer of 1991, two years after the original movie, directed by British director Peter Hewitt. This was his first feature film, after he received a BAFTA for his award-winning short film, The Candy Show. He travelled to Hollywood and called up many executives, and Orion Studios were impressed with his work, and gave him the offer of directing the sequel to Bill and Ted. Peter Hewitt was a big comic strip fan, and you can tell from the movie it does have a comic book look to it, and also he originally tried to get the job as director on Judge Dredd, but lost out to Danny Cannon. Peter Hewitt does actually cameo in the movie as the smoker in the Builder's Emporium. <coughs> See you real soon. <coughs> Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure was a commercial success, produced on a modest budget of around $10 million, and managed to grab 40 million in the US alone, and did well worldwide. The original film was loosely inspired by Back to the Future, and you can see they have slightly copied the format. Due to its success, it inspired a cartoon series which lasted two seasons, which I'm embarrassed to admit I did watch as a kid. The original title for Bogus Journey was Bill and Ted Go to Hell, but was changed before any posters or adverts were commissioned, due to objections of the word hell, which would have upset many Americans, the producers believed. The film opens in the utopian future that results from the music of Bill and Ted. Chuck Denomalus, who detests this society, steals one of the time-travelling phone booths with the aid of two robots fashioned after Bill and Ted, and travels to the late 20th century with the intent to prevent Bill and Ted from winning the San Dimas Battle of the Bands. Rufus attempts to stop him, but becomes lost in the circuits of time. In the present, Wild Stallions is preparing for the contest, though Bill and Ted's current fiancés and former 15th century princesses Elizabeth and Joanne have become skilled musicians, but Bill and Ted are still very inept. Despite this, the organiser assures them a slot in the contest as the final act. Bill's stepmother Missy divorces his father in favour of Ted's, who still threatens Ted with military school, should they fail the Battle of the Bands. The robots arrive and replace Bill and Ted, killing them by throwing the two over the side of a cliff. The robots head back to Bill and Ted's flat and start to behave rudely to the princesses in work to ruin the duo's fame. Bill and Ted's souls are met by Death, who challenges them in a game for their souls. Bill and Ted escape after giving Death and Melvin. They attempt to alert their families, but in their current form, it proves difficult and at one point are cast down into hell at a seance held by Missy. In hell they are tormented by Satan and are made to face their own fears, 
and they realise their only escape is to take Death's offer. Taken to Death's chambers, the spirit gives them the option of what game to play, and Bill and Ted, to Death's dismay, select modern games like Battleship, Cluedo and Twister. Easily beating Death, Death admits defeat, and willingly becomes their servant. The soundtrack for the sequel incorporates many tunes from popular rock and metal bands, from Faith No More to Megadeth. The style of music helped paint more of a darker feel to the movie. There is little orchestral music by the composer David Newman, but his score was released recently in limited numbers and contains around 45 minutes of music, which he wrote for the film. It's sold out now and is very hard to track down. After the release of Bogus Journey, there was a very short live action series. After the animated series was cancelled, it was supplemented by a live action version of the same name. The series was set to air during the 91-92 television season, but production was delayed until Bogus Journey made a profit at the box office. The series ended up airing in the summer of 92, with only 7 episodes produced. As you can see, it's very, very bad. I'm Bill S. Preston Esquire. And I am Pat Theodore Logan. And together, we are... Wild Scallions! <laughs> Bogus Journey, I feel, isn't as funny as the first film, but that doesn't mean there isn't comedic scenes. There are some genuine funny moments that work, as you can see here. I can't believe Missy divorced your dad and married mine. Shut up, Ted. I wonder if after we're married, the princesses will stay over with us. Yeah. Our girlfriends are most chaste. Yeah. At least they're not dating our dads. Good point, dude. Yeah. Excellent! <laughs> dude, what? I got a full-on robot chubby. I don't understand what's come over you two. Well, you see, we used to be pussweeds, but now we're metal. So get over here and put out! <laughs> Let's go! You can forget about us playing tonight. <laughs> Fine. And I guess that's that. <laughs> Oh, yeah! Now what? Oh no. You look great, dude. You think so? Yeah. You do. <laughs> you shut up. Come on, dude. It's not fun. <laughs> You are a most excellent scientist, Station. Yeah. Plus, you got an excellently huge Martian butt. Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey does exactly what a sequel should do. It offers the same comedic style of the first film and does something completely new with the movie concentrating less on time travel, which was the original premise of Bill and Ted, it changes its style a little. It's kind of like the first film, but on speed. It's a more energetic style of filmmaking, but also a little rough around the edges. The comedy was more subtle in the original movie, but with the sequel it does come across in some areas as a bit desperate to be funny, like it's trying too hard to get your attention. With the performances, Alex Winter clearly outshined Keanu Reeves in every area. Some of the best comedy comes from Alex Winter, and he also plays his grandmother in Hell. Keanu Reeves just acts like he's completely stoned throughout the movie, or doesn't seem very interested. Yeah, Bill, another Bill and Ted would be good. Another Bill and nah, Ted movie. No, 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 no! Uh, <laughs> no, man, that's was another stupid. One. Bill and Ted's stupid. Excellent Adventure, number two. Nah. Uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, the sequel. Ah, it's another good one we like. We'll find it that one. Bill and Ted are back, and, and then uh, there was a cereal, and then uh, there was a thing, and then you come out the toys, and then the thing, 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 ring it up for sale. That's the word. William Sadler does a fantastic job as Death, and probably the best thing about this film. He provides some great humour and makes the character of Death extremely likable. I completely forgot he was the villain in Die Hard 2, and is also going to be starring in the upcoming Iron Man 3. There has been talk of a third film for years, but nothing really was announced. 
Keanu Reeves was often asked to say lines from the film during interviews, but he always said no, and many got the impression he wanted to forget about the series. But come 2010, both Keanu and Alex had said there was a script in the works and they liked the story which takes place 20 years later. No dates as of yet have been announced, but both parties did say they were happy with the script, so hopefully a director will be on board soon. It wouldn't surprise me if Alex Winter himself directed it. He turned out to be a credible director after Bill and Ted. The director, Peter Hewitt, does a very good job for his first feature film. It has loads of different types of visual effects, and being a sequel to a popular movie, there is a lot of pressure put on your shoulders, and he manages to pull off a solid film that delivers on its genre and expectations, but in comparison to the first film, it does fall short. The original film does look more polished and more visually appealing. They do recycle some gags for the sequel as well. I do miss the concept of time travel for the sequel, but they are going in a different direction. Critics at the time thought the sequel was better, but over time the general public have favoured the original movie more. The Bill and Ted films are definitely cult classics. They are a product of their time, and to many people who didn't grow up on these films, they may find them to be a bit stupid and childish in many areas. But they are very charming films, and Bill and Ted may not be the brightest pair in cinema, but nonetheless they are very likeable characters, and are guaranteed to make you laugh. Give up.